I love Apple Mail. It is my main productivity tool on my Mac, my iPhone and my iPad. But sometimes I wonder why Apple makes it so hard and not obvious how to really use this powerful app right. Some of their design choices actually leave me flabbergasted and frustrated, especially when it comes to connecting emails with other apps within my productivity system. Email is probably the main source for task and project related input for me. But an email program is a poor place for processing and working on a lot of these infos. Of course, I have a task manager, a place where I store project related files and a note system where I store lots of information in folders. So I really need to be able to quickly decide with each email what I want to do with it and where it should go. And by that I do not only mean in which folder I want to place the email, I also mean to bring this email into my task manager, my note system, my file system or any other part of my productivity system. Unfortunately Apple made it not obvious how to do this. This even went so far that some people believe that Apple Mail can't do some of these things or even if they figured something out like how to create a link to an email on the Mac. That link might not work on the iPhone or iPad. They even might have switched to other apps who made the creation and access to these linked emails easier like Spark where you can easily create a link and share it to any email. But this comes with a heavy security cost. That email is now uploaded to the internet on a Spark server and anyone can access this email with that link. This is actually something I don't want with my emails and with Apple's stance on security and privacy I can relate why they didn't go that route. And this is not because Apple might, can't do these things, but it is because Apple made some poor design and default settings choices, which I will help you remedy with this video. After doing some minor changes to the settings and learning some tricks, you will see that Apple Mail is a rock solid productivity workhorse and any mail you link to on your Mac, your iPhone or your iPad will be immediately accessible on all machines from all kinds of apps and you will finally learn to love Apple Mail again. Trust me on that. And these links will still be only accessible to you because these links will not be in internet links, but internal ones which only work on your machines. If you want to share an email with others on a shared drive, I tell you later how to do that too. So let's get started on setting the system up and turning Apple Mail into productivity beast for you. You can use Apple Mail with other apps primarily with three ways. First, by linking to an email, second by exporting an email as EML file and third by copying and pasting the content of an email. Exporting and copy and pasting are well known ways for most users to bring data from Apple Mail into other apps or the file system. If you don't know how to export mails on the iPhone or the iPad, stick with me, I'll show you how. But linking to an email via URL is a not so obvious but very powerful way. Unfortunately, Apple made it very hard and not really obvious to do this with an Apple Mail. And they also made a default setting, which makes it even harder to do this successfully using multiple devices. To make it work, you have to understand how these links work. Basically, every mail has a unique link which looks like this. It is message double colon slash slash followed by the unique mail identifier. These links will work across your devices, the Mac, the iPhone and the iPad. With that, you can open and refer to any mail in Apple Mail independent of where you created the link. So a link you created on a Mac will open the same email on an iPhone or iPad. However, there is a slight catch here. It only works on mails which are available on your local system. While this is no problem on a Mac where all your mails are downloaded, it becomes a problem on an iPhone or an iPad. This is the point where people struggle with links across devices. They create a link on their Mac, which works, but once they want to open it on their iPhone or iPad, the link stops working. And the reason is that the mail is in a folder or mailbox which does not automatically get downloaded on your iPhone or iPad. So the main setting you must change for this to work is under Settings, Mail, Accounts, Fetch New Data. For every account which supports the push function, you can select which mailboxes or folders are automatically downloaded. And here is the catch. By default, only the inbox and the sent mailbox are downloaded. So any email that you have moved to another mailbox will only get downloaded on your device if you go into this mailbox in your mail app and refresh that mailbox on your device. So what you need to do is select any folder here which you want to also download automatically. If you are an avid archiver and 
you put any processed mail in your archive folder, then select the archive mailbox. If you however create a mailbox for each client, you need to select all these mailboxes here. Unfortunately, new mailboxes will not get ticked automatically. So if you create a new mailbox, you might have to come back here. So once you have done this for all your accounts, you are ready to go. Now that we have done the necessary preparation, we can discuss how to link to mails. There are several ways you can create the links to use in other apps on your devices. On a Mac, first using drag and drop. You can select one or multiple emails and drag and drop them. In Apple Notes, this will create a nicely formatted link. In the Reminders app, you will create a task with a link to that mail. In Calendar, however, this will only create an event with the email subject as title but no link to the email. Number two, using an Apple script. I already shared two Apple scripts, which you can trigger via Text Expander or Keyboard Maestro from the target of the link. I will also put a link to these scripts in the description. Basically, you can use these two scripts to create an email URL in any app. One will create the bare URL and the other a nicely formatted markdown link with subject, sender, as well as the URL. By the way, this also works in the notes field on a calendar event using the share menu. The share menu trick does not work on the mail list level. It only works when you select text from the subject or body text and then right click and pick share and pick the app to share it with. Again, some of the apps like reminders will create a link to the email, some won't. It is a bit of hit and miss. Using third party tools. Some third party apps like Things3 or OmniFocus have their own software solutions to connect mail with these apps, like sending an email to a specific email address or quick input agents, which also retain a link to the selected email. On both iPhones and iPads, you can also use several ways to connect email to other apps. Number one, using drag and drop. Drag and drop works on both the iPhone and the iPad by pressing and holding with one finger on the email and then without lifting the finger, moving it slightly off until it turns into what I call a ghost mail cell. Then with your other hand, you can move to another app with swipe gestures and drop the ghost mail cell where you want to create the link. This is the most flexible option and it works on most apps. I have created an entire video about this drag and drop feature on iOS. You can watch it here. Number two, using the share menu. Activating the share menu works just like on the Mac. You need to select text from the subject or the body of the email and then select the app to share it with. Again, it is a bit of hit and miss. Some apps produce an email link like Apple's Reminders app some won't like Apple's notes. So unless you are connecting the mails to the reminders app, in which case I mostly use the share menu, your best way of connecting Apple mail to other apps on iOS is by using the drag and drop finger action. Sometimes you might want to export your mails and bring them into your file system. I do this with important project files and you even might want to share these with others in a shared cloud drive. Here is how to export mails on a Mac by drag and drop. You can select one or multiple mails and drag them out of the mail app into any file location. This will create email files, which you then can open with an Apple Mail on a Mac or on Windows with Outlook and lots of other mail apps by the save dialog. You can also use file save as to create these email files on an iPhone or iPad using drag and drop. With the before mentioned drag and drop feature on an iPhone or iPad, you can drag one or several emails into the files app, which will create email files. You can drop it in any location, maybe the local storage or shared cloud storage like iCloud, Dropbox or OneDrive. The only problem on the iPhone is that an email file cannot be opened directly on the iPhone. You need to download an app called EML Viewer and then you can, you can then use this app to open EML files and view and react to them. So that's it for now. I hope you learned quite a bit today and it will enable you to use Apple Mail in a much more powerful way and as a main tool in your productivity workflow. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to be informed when my next video drops, also hit the subscribe button. If you have a question or would like to tell me how you will use Apple Mail from now on, please leave me a comment. And if you want to find out what other great productivity apps come with your Apple devices included, check out my iWork tutorial next. So see you in my next video. Bye.